For the honor and glory of the Lord, we'd like to uh, praise his name with a song that the title, Tell Me the Old, Old Story. like to hear the message uh, and, uh, with uh, uh, Pastor Joel Barnedo with the title Conspiracy of Kindness. Let's uh, open our hearts to hear the word of God. Thank you for that wonderful music, our instrumental. When Jesus comes, all Christians, the saints, and everyone that was saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ will have the privilege to play, to play instrument in heaven for a thousand years. And I hope that the Lord will inspire us to really wish for that day. My topic will be about conspiracy of kindness. It came to my mind the conspiracy of kindness. We have in Denver visitors more than the members. We have a lot of visitors. Because I found out when I interviewed one sister who was coming now for four months, I said, Sister Ford, Mrs. Ford, why did you continue to come and attend the Sabbath school? And she told me, when I entered the church, I saw everyone was friendly. And your wife came to me and hugged me and told me, I'll invite you for a lunch after the service. And she was an African-American lady. Then I said, wow, 
It was the, the attraction of the doctrine alone. But it was the kindness of all the members that has brought her to continue working. And it's interesting that last Sunday, I gave a Bible study last week, last Wednesday to her about the soon coming of Jesus. And as I was giving the Bible study, in the closing, she told me, if Jesus is coming soon, Pastor, why do we not invite people to, to prepare? And I said, what do you mean by that? Can I participate and go out and give invitation for the people that Jesus is coming soon? And I was shocked with that, coming from a new friend of the church and I said my wife had been praying for somebody to go out to distribute in the mall leaflets about the second coming would you want oh I'm so excited but I found you in the internet I found the Seventh-day Adventist Reformed Church I know the Seventh-day Adventist for long but I tried to then I came to your church and you were all kind to me and last Sunday, she went with my wife in the mall and distributed more than 200 leaflets about the second coming of Jesus. And Sister Emily spoke to her the other day. And she said, I'm so excited. I, I hope that I can do it every day. I said, oh, I hope that this, this is a, will be a contagious to everyone. And that is why when I came here, God prepared me already with the joy of that Baptist lady. She come on Wednesday, no matter if we are sometimes two or three, Sister Barbara speaks. And I told the Sister Barbara, you speak the first 15 minute story telling to the children, I do the rest. We started to do kindness evangelism, the conspiracy of kindness. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6, Keep on sowing your seed, for never you never know which will grow. Perhaps it will. Sowing the seed. Kindness is a language which the dumb can speak. The deaf can understand. My dear brothers and sisters and fellow citizens with the saints, in our journey to heaven, God is looking for young men and women, old and young, for people who are willing to participate in the acts of love and kindness. For, for people outside of their present circle. My wife told me on Sunday, she, she will bring the, leaflet, the little booklet of the health tips. They will go, Sister Barbara prepared 10 pieces, and they will go from leaflets to this health. And they are excited already. And this is a new a new beginning of a new beginning of the Reformed Church. It's not a new beginning of a rebellion, but it is a new beginning of enthusiasm. Sometimes I look at the Hollywood actors, they are telling a lie, but they do it in the, as if it's true in their action. And we know the truth, we are vegetarian, but when we present vegetarian, we are vegetarian. And the people are not impressed. We are telling the truth in a wrong way. God is looking today for people who believe that a humble demonstration of love for people who, be, who plants a seed of eternity in the hearts of others that will blossom into faith. We have started with a student. I never was happy in my life as when I went to the five students the next door, the second door. And they, 
I pray to the Lord. I carry still this happiness because of Mrs. Ford and my wife. And I said, that joy will touch the people's heart. And the first house, the man was have a stroke. They're from Guatemala, the wife. I said, I'm yes. sure you love your husband, isn't it? Yes. You don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose him. The reason why I bring the students is to show them how I, mean, I can teach you how to do massage so that you don't need a, a physical therapist. You do it yourself. And hug your husband three times a day. It will loosen the clogged arteries. Because, happy, you know, massage and laughing is the internal massage of the heart. And that pain is the cry of a hungry nerve for a better blood supply. When somebody is crying, hug her. Don't try to tell her, I understand you. No, just touch her. And she says, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Because many missionaries come to my door trying to judge me that the end of the world is near, but they never listen to me. I pray, brothers and sisters, that your courage to step out of your safety zone and begin to meet the needs of a desperate world, a hurting world, that you will understand that if you stay on your hammock or in your Californian king-size bed with your nice television, somebody if we withhold your light, somebody dies every minute and every second. In John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus says, By thee shall all men know that you are my disciples if you, have, if you are vegetarian. Is that what the Bible says? If you are a health reformer, but it says here, if you have love for one another. It is the love that melts the heart. Last night at 2 o'clock in the morning, I said, it's not good to call other people, but maybe I can call my wife at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was 4 o'clock here, it was 2 o'clock. Then I said, happy Sabbath. I love you. He never get angry. He said, Charity begins at home. The love to others, the love to others will, will attract them here. We met a man with Brother Richard. He looks tired. He looks 47, but his age was 32. I did not told him you look old. I told him, you look tired. But if you come here and share with us the joy, I let him eat the vegetarian food instead of telling him that fish has mercury or it causes cancer. I told him, taste our food. And you see the children, they are coming from different American family, from Germany. This is the only restaurant that teaches children how to eat vegetables and tomatoes. Bring your children in and send them to school. In the afternoon, they come back and played with us football. And he told me before he leaves, I said, I'm a player of the, in the Catholic Church. I will go tomorrow, Sabbath morning, 4 o'clock, to one, seat, one state to play the piano. And he told me when I come back on Monday, I will call you and I will bring all the, most of my Catholic friends here. You teach them massage and teach them healthy. Food. He said he has a truck to bring the load of people. You see? It was kindness of Richard and another sister. Media. We will turn the world upside down. Through our kindness. Not through Bible text. Shooting Jehovah's Witness. Shooting the Adventists. Shoot. We are tired of that. I lose. Every time I preach, I lose people. They don't want to come back in Denver. Why? Because I shoot people. 
I do a sermon hurting the people, judging them, the end is coming, doing this. Do you really believe Jesus is coming? Because if you really believe, you will get your bag with your books and you will go house to house. But if you take your car and just go vacation, where are you going? I got to Toronto. I got to, uh, what will you do there? Ah, I want to have a, a change of pace and scenery once in a while. Oh, really? Did you bring a pamphlet? Oh, yeah, that is the work of the Bible worker. My dear brothers and sisters, we have three kinds of animals. I mentioned that as an introduction, but I did not explain it. Three kinds of animals. The, uh, the dog was for the children, but I have a special one for the adults. It's the shark. The shark didn't just live life. They attacked it. They, they come at life with great aggressiveness, with, with control as the, their highest value. No, we are the only church of God on earth. I am as. Oh, really? Shark tend to be movers and shakers who love to take over in any project. Teach the, them how to come back. I know that. Oh, really? You know it? They're known for getting a lot done, but not necessarily without an incident. On, on the downside, sharks tend to traumatize everyone around them with their aggression. Sharks tend to, to fit the picture of all the worst characteristics of a pussy salesman. Shark approach is negative. Emphasizing the judgment of God. That is charge approach. Oh, the end is coming. Oh, really? The end is coming? Why are you so relaxed? You, I only saw you one time in the church on Sabbath. We are seven days Adventists. Not just seven day Adventists. Shark evangelism talk too fast. You can see the shark. Sounds like an auctioneer. Oh, this is 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 2,300 days. A lot of texts. Shark evangelist cornered every relative and friends who would listen for a few minutes and shoot them with many texts. You're invited by your relative to a graduation party and you begin to talk about meat eating is bad, smoking is bad, and while all your relatives are smoking, they said, Bring the man out! Hit him! It's your uncle. Oh, really? People are grown up tired with these people. After a while, when people saw them coming, they would make up excuses like, I can talk now, I've got to polish my dog. So when you are coming and busy, because now he will begin to talk to us about the end of the world. What a shark evangelist shared was the truth, but the package in which the message came wrapped was incredibly unloving and insensitive. Actually, this shark approach is more as a soul alienator than a soul winner. That's the reason why we have empty seats. Are you not surprised that? How many years have we been in every church that we came from? Always empty. We are all the while sitting each other. How about John? Hi, Pablo. Nothing new person. Everybody are former members or either a missionary students. Why? We know too much by word. But no kindness. Yeah, these sharks, their favorite tracts capitalizes on the use of fear to get people's attention. The goal of the shark approach is to evangelize. Evangelism is confrontation. They have traumatized most of their friends and relatives and their wife and neighbors. They start going home 
If your wife is not in the church, try to bring a flower. It says, dress up. Let's go to eat in the restaurant. Nice olive garden. Then the wife says, we are 50 years married. This is the first time he does that to me. Thank you. I will not be jealous to the worldly. They're always in the restaurant. We don't, we don't hate restaurants. Because restaurants today are learning how to become vegetarian now. But sometimes we hate restaurants because we are stingy. We don't want to bring people to the restaurant. We still want to save our money. Now we go to the other animal. Forget the shark because they are, the sharks are Pharisees. 50 years in the reform, never brought one soul. If he is removed in the position, he lives. These are sharks. That's why the, the, the fishermen, they prepared a lot of heavy things to catch them. In the, so they sell them. And even their fins are being used for cancer. Maybe that's good, maybe their fins. Now we talk about the carp. The carp is an opposite extreme of sharks. Carp live through life in a lethargic manner. They see themselves as life's victim. How oh, we were in the reform before. My father was a pastor. But they removed him. We were so hurt. I married outside the church. But we are still coming once in a while when they have a week, week of prayer. The carp is too weak to ever function as a change agent in life. Carp exist on the bottom of the river. They live off of the food that the other fish have discarded. Carp are dropouts from the fight and make it a primary aim in life to seek the safe route and to avoid any sense of responsibility. Carp don't make things happen. They watch things happen around them. Oh, you have missionary student? Oh, praise the Lord, I'll pray for them. But they will never send the $100 for the students at least to buy their food. Or if you're an, a rich man, how about telling the students, I'll donate $500 to buy books for you so that you, will, can, you can begin a new beginning. This is why we, God, God, blesses the people who are businessmen. But they, all, they always sometimes have a nice car. And how about donating to the students when they go back to Toronto? This is a missionary car, a book mobile, so that you can write. Richard can write. Danny can write. Okay. We sacrifice to share with them the wisdom. You sacrifice a second-hand car. Is that not practical? Sometimes we preach too much about heaven. In, yeah, in heaven we will have hearts, we have gold. How about donating your old house so that they can live there? And add another four rooms for the girls so that they will be with, the, with their girls. A movement must happen today, my dear brothers and sisters. There will come a time that we cannot use money. We cannot use anything. How about donating your guitars to these young people? Giving them your, there are businessmen who have a lot of nice bags. Give to them one by one because if you if you are a, a corporator, you big to to a, a heavy bag. Even it's empty, it looks big. People says, "What will this girl sell to me?" It must be like a student. Yeah. In terms of evangelism, carp are sometimes former zealots for the Lord. Believers who have become discouraged along the way and have given up trying to lead others to Christ because they couldn't take up the pressure. They are forever former sharks, usually don't consciously decide to take a break from sharing the good news. Their love for God or people has sit, uh, not necessarily grown dim. They're just grown tired of militant evangelism. 
So they don't, I don't like that approach. That then they become carved. Always at the back of the, of the church. They don't participate. Yeah, they, 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 they answer a little bit in the lesson. But yeah, I did that already when I was young. I was a missionary. But now, I don't believe that Jesus is coming soon. These are carp. Now we go to the third but wonderful. I want to end up positively. The dolphins. You love dolphins? Oh, I love dolphins. Dolphins combine the strength of sharks and carp. These people are enthusiastic, positive about life. I like to compare Brother John's visit here as a dolphin's act. Driving is not because it's 16 hours, but because 16 hours with your wife and two children. Because the car is a little smaller, your, your elbows hit each other, then that starts. You stop on the rest place, and then you eat together your salad and your sandwich with the cortex. Mm. This fellowship, this is not a journey, it is a, a family journey. So the, the dolphins move through life with a deep sense of purpose. Whereas the shark tends to be overly responsible and the shark accomplishes little or nothing, the dolphins has a mission in life but still has fun on the way to the goal. Dolphins motto Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is fun. If you start going out of your house without breakfast, without prayer, with taking a shower, and you go out canvassing, you will find enemies who will slam the door in your face. All of us are really dolphins, my dear brothers and sisters. But when we begin to act like sharks, our message becomes difficult to believe. Dolphins want to show God's love in the practical way. When you go home, buy a mirror, look at yourself, and practice smiling. Hello, how are you? Even you're alone, good. You will like yourself, as the roasters like himself when he look at the mirror. As I see Jesus in, in his ministry, my dear brothers, I can see that he went from person to person, operating as a dolphin. He modeled for us a life that's balanced and intensity with period of relaxation. You find Jesus in the evening in a mountain talking to his father. Don't be afraid to be alone sometimes. We don't meet people all the time. You need to be a loner sometimes. Take it easy, man. That's what the American says. He followed the scripture in Isaiah 61. Let's read Isaiah 61, which serve as a text for Jesus' first sermon. Open your Bible if you have never opened your Bible in a second service. I invite you and you will enjoy it, my dear brothers and sisters. Isaiah chapter 61. It says here, this is a dolphin text. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings into the meek, unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the broken hearted. So he brings us a scotch tape to proclaim liberty to the captives or illegal immigrants are now free. Do you want to hear that? We talk too much about these are illegal, these are illegal, these are illegal instead of praying for something different and talk another topic and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all them that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, 
the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified and they shall build the old waste places the old waste places are the kitchen that has a lot of a refrigerator with all those mayonnaise fleshly peanut butter with all those that are waste places yesterday I told the man if somebody kidnap your daughter an attempted kidnap what will you do I will protect my daughter you're a good father how about if peanut butter attack your daughter and coca-cola come in the room with a shot and then kill your daughter in the stomach would you defend you are right sir then he bought another four books I said the, this nutrition book how to cook in basketball we call it defense the book will defend you that the meat cannot go because they might score a goal on your mouth this is the goal the three-point play <sighs> and he understood and this is spirit the better way to help protects you not to lose your wife because maybe you're too much busy to missionary work you forgot to hug your wife uh, this is how you explain the book don't talk what I say make your own I, I spoke to Richard today he said I will never forget that logic there is a logic in that it's a game Satan is playing forward and he wants a card pass the coca-cola go back dream of it you cannot enter into the line because the books are there. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus approached. The audience of Jesus came with different kinds of brokenness. The women with their baby, they saw Jesus coming. Oh, I want my baby to be blessed by Jesus. There was a lady who was walking. She has 18 years blood I went I, I lost my house I lost my I, I lost my camel I lost my ship no doctor can heal me oh when will Jesus come when will Jesus come and then suddenly she cannot come to the crowd Jesus was up, was surrounded by all the apostles who look like we have a position. Judas was there. I will be a treasurer when the International Missionary Society will have a re-election in the future. It's everything. And the lady says, I just, even just to look, but I would like to touch the hand of his garments. My dear brothers and sisters, young people, you are going house to house to touch the hand of the people. A little bit with a smile, a little magic massage, a little listening through your ears. Because people needed God's love in order to be healed. In short, Jesus was a bringer of God's love to the broken world. This is dolphin evangelism, Jesus style. We are also, my dear brothers, youth members, to bring the good news to the world in just the same way. In closing, I would like to, to read a word and a testimony. You may have medicine, but not health. People have a lot of antibiotics, tetracycline with papays, aspirin, a lot, but not help. People can have a house, but not a home. Entertainment, but not happiness. Togetherness, but not love. A book, but not intelligence. A cross but not faith. Luxury, but not beauty. Food, but not appetite. A bed, 
I had an experience, I was canvassing with my wife in Denver, and we were looking for a house to buy, and we stopped, and the lady and the neighbor said to me, are you interested with house? I said, I just want to look what an American house look inside. Because it was for sale, so it's free to look. Did not have the money to buy that. But the lady said, if you want to see an American house, come in my house. Oh, really? Then I said, I mean, maybe she was, she was a great, rich woman. And I said, maybe she was comfortable because I was with my wife. And we went, enter, this is my living room. This is, then we went to the bedroom with a nice bed like that. Underneath here, husband and wife can be lost in that kind of bed. And I was looking at it, and then suddenly her eyes was full of tears. And I look at her. What happened? <sighs> What happened, Mom? Seven years ago, my husband left and he never came back. We don't know where he is. And then I hugged her. I did not say I understand you because my wife did not leave me. She's still there. Because, but then I just put my arms and she calmed down. Every time I see my bed, my husband gave to me a gift. And every time I lie down, that's why I don't use that for two years anymore. I just live in the smaller room. Then the woman says, would you like to take it? I will donate it to you. I look at my wife and my wife's eyes began, began to be open in her life. Because she is not too big, but she said, how can I climb the bed? I mean to say. <laughs> Then I, I called the U-Haul immediately. Then, then I gave to her $200 as a gift. I never knew what is a California king size. But I saw, because I saw one time a family with that kind of bed. But this is higher and bigger. Then I put it Friday at 4 o'clock in my house. Then I said, a bed, but not sleep, because she loves her husband more than the dead. A luxury grave, but not heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, don't talk about the end of the world. Talk that every day you stay in your church, stay too long in the pulpit. The end is coming to those people who will have cancer because the health books are not being given to their houses. People will die of atherosclerosis. People will die of loss of memory until they don't understand anymore. I want to read a testimony. It says, Angel of Revelation 18, 1. In a large degree, through our publishing houses, is to be accomplished the work of that other angel who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. It's not the IMS, the other angel. It is the work of the canvassing work of the IMS books. Publication must be multiplied and scattered like the leaves of autumn. The silent messengers are enlightening and molding the minds of thousands in every country and in every clime. Can you imagine if a colporteur who was 17 years old did not knock at our door, my father's house? With a long dress, long hair, we have never, because we, we live in a city, prosperous city. We were businessmen. My father was a businessman. And come a lady with long hair, short lady, and with a smile, and says, can we speak to you? And when she entered, she was friendly, she did massage to my mama, she showed the science of natural healing by Carlos Cosell. We never saw a book like that. On Friday, she went to the market, she buy vegetables and veggie meat and cook for us. We were observing, we were like beaten by a cobra, like, what's happening here? And then she dressed up, 
after taking a bath at two o'clock, three o'clock, she was well dressed a special Sabbath, and she is singing with the songbook. And we were with shorts, <laughs> and we were <laughs> dirty. Thirty Seventh Day Adventists. My mom was still in the market, and this lady was singing. And so we dressed up, followed her, and she became. We became reformer, my dear brothers. All the thousands more of our people had the realization of the time in which we are living. And of the work to be done in the field service, in house-to-house -house labor. There are many, many who know not the truth. They need to hear the call to come to Jesus. The sorrowing are to be cheered. The weak, the strengthened, the mourners comforted. The poor are to have the gospel preached to them. Call for the ministry, page 24. The importance of this work is fully equal to that of a ministry. So it's less important as the minister. If there is one work more important than other, it is of getting our publication before the public. Thus leading them to search the scripture. Missionary work, introducing our publication into families. Conversing and praying with them, it is a good work and one which will educate men and women to do pastoral labor. I, I cannot imagine if a doctor says, oh, I need to be a doctor. Why? Are you an agent of anything? You're good to be a doctor. If you're a doctor at the same time going house to house, that's what Jesus worked, the highest place in the there is no higher work than evangelistic canvassing, for it involves the performance of the highest moral duties. Those who engage in this work need always to be under the control of the Spirit of God. There must be no exalting of self. What any of us that we did not receive from Christ, we must love as brethren, revealing our love by helping one. When I heard that the students don't want to go home because they want to learn canvassing, it was a privilege. People thought that I will do it in Canada. No, I did it here. Because this is the source. And you will go home. I graduated from an international, the world headquarters. Can you imagine you came to the world here? What was the headquarters of Jesus? That was Bethlehem. Peace on earth and goodwill to men in Bethlehem, the angels. Not in a big headquarters, Washington, D.C., Maryland, no. Let us not be backward, my dear young people, that we just to be done in warning the world must be done without delay. You may travel to Canada, and then comes the end, when the angels may say, it is finished. It, it will not happen yet, but it will. You are, you know what Pearson said before the last speech in the General Conference of the Seventh Day. He says, young people, the young people of the 21st century will be a generation who know not God. And you young people are the last generations of Christians living in before the end of the world. She is a friend of, he is a friend of Ellen G. White. Pearson brought canvassing on the front. And I'm proud I follow the advice of Elder Pearson. Not everything that comes from the Adventists are bad. Without them, we are nothing. They brought us, they printed to us the Bible. In Korea, they printed the Bible with Ellen G. White's testimony. Don't talk against Adventists because we are all Adventists. Share them the joy, thanking the Baptist for the songbook. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Th thank the Methodist, thank the Catholic, because the Catholic brought the cross and the Bible into the whole the world. Don't talk like a shark. And in closing, Ellen G. White says, as long as probation continues, there will be opportunity for the canvassers to work when the religious denomination unite with the papacy to oppress God's people, 
Places where there is a religious freedom will be opened by evangelistic canvasser by the 12 student that will finish on April 15. If in one place the persecution becomes severe, let the workers do as Christ is directed. When they persecute you in Toronto, flee to Vancouver. But the testimony says, when they persecute you in this city, flee ye to, into another. May the Lord help us. I want to look at you one by one. I mean you. I mean you. I mean you. While you still look younger and fresher, it is time to use the beauty of Esther to go to the king and show yourself. I'm becoming old. I went to Canada in 1998, young, slim. Now I can lose my tummy when I control it. But it will one day put me down. In closing, my dear brothers and sisters, a lady found the truth to one of our culprits. And one day, she fell asleep and had a dream. And her dream was which she was entering the, the door of heaven and she was the last one and she saw harps and music were playing already and she said to Jesus can you still open the door and, you, and a big voice comes and says who is this he said this is Maria okay why are you late she did not answer and Jesus said, who is with you? And the lady says, I'm alone. And Jesus says, we don't accept people who are alone here. Because we have crowns that have, must be, have stars. And the woman suddenly woke up and said, from now on, I will join the canvas anymore. May the peace of the Lord be with you, my dear brothers. And Jesus asked you, whom shall I send? And you answer, here am I, Lord, send me.